These are the people you're allowing to influence you. God showed me Oprah Winfrey. Chief is what he was showing. Spiritual and literal. If someone doesn't care about their own life, what makes you think they care about yours? You can find this prophecy in prostitution in Hollywood, body doubles, Hollywood, travel in the U.S., Tiffany Montgomery, descendants of Shem and God's judgment. I posted it on October 16, 2023. Kirstie Alley, Madonna, Oprah, Brad Pitt. These are the people the Lord showed me. Yet we allow them to influence us. I'm saying us, not me. I'm not being influenced by these people. I'm speaking about a general us as a nation, as a people. Allowing people who do not love God, who do not like God, who do not worship God as God to influence us. Look into Oprah Winfrey. The woman has promoted a man named John of God, a false prophet who has deceived many people, telling them he can do signs and wonders getting people to go off of their cancer treatment. And later they died, obviously. Only for him to come out sexual assault cases everywhere. Hundreds of women accusing him of sexual assault. This was the woman that, this was the man that Oprah did a special on and exposed him to thousands of people. As he realized he was clairvoyant when he predicted a terrible storm that destroyed a neighboring village. This event began his journey as a spiritual medium. Are we all in some sense missionaries of God are we all do we all have the possibility in our own way to be a medium for God Todos nós somos everybody is é a medium who practices good uh, and we are all children of God uh, and each person has their mission yeah. the first time I saw it today I was humbled by the experience Jeffrey Epstein, Shesh is his BFF. But when these things come out, people are so enamored, like, oh, she wouldn't know. How would she know? You're seeing a track record with this woman, yet you're still allowing her to influence you. My God. What about her best friend, Iyana Van Zandt, who she gave a whole show? Do you know Iyana Van Zandt is a self-proclaimed Yoruba priestess? I was at work last week. And my coworker had a book and I just, I was just very interested. I like touching stuff. So I, I picked up the book to see what it was because he, it, it was torn up, meaning he reads that book. And I saw Iyana Van Zandt. I was like, okay, let me read the back. Yoruba Priestess. It said Yoruba Priestess. And I'll post the, I'll post the name of the book so you actually look it up. It was a purple book. How many Christians were exposed to a Yala Van Zandt, a Yoruba priestess, an idolater through Oprah Winfrey? Who is influencing you? What are they influencing you to buy? We have a generation that's saying, oh, I'm the goat. He's the goat. Oh, it means greatest of all time. Beloved, they told you that it's an acronym for greatest of all time. I'm sorry. They told you that it's a, it stands for greatest of all time. But the reality is that goat is indicative of the Baphomet. And the Baphomet is indicative of Satan because that's who they worship. Because many of these people are Masons. Many of them are Masons. Many of them are Masons. Many of them have sold their souls on a dotted line and given themselves up to be used by the enemy. God showed me LeBron James and I shared this with you all. That he is referred to as the chosen one. I saw them tattooing, a, was it a snake or a dragon on his back? And lo and behold, it actually existed on his back. And now people are seeing that his son, Bronny, and all this symbolism that's following him. And now people are shocked. But this is the man who people are allowing to influence them. That when he throws that dust in the air and pats his hands, you guys don't understand that's actually a Vodun ritual. 35 points a game in the 10 games since his 38th birthday as he continues to chase Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to become the NBA's all-time leading scorer. And the Clippers have only had Kawhi...
who are you allowing to influence you? These musicians have gotten to the point where they are singing about everything except for worshiping the Lord. They promote sexual promiscuity, drugs, and alcohol. Look at Chris Brown and look at Lil Wayne. Look at what they promote. Or is it gang culture from Tupac and Biggie? N.W.A. Now you have people such as Sexy Red and what's the other one? Suki Hana. When Sister Monique and I were doing this teaching on music, I was looking up their lyrics to give an example because I stopped listening to secular music years ago. And so I don't know what's trendy. I know of names because I see them on TikTok. And so I was like, okay, let me pull some lyrics so that we can see exactly what type of music these people are promoting. And I was mortified when I saw some of these things that these women talk about. But this is what they have people thinking, influencing people. They've influenced people to think that the buttocks, as in the anus that God, the anus that God gave you to purify your body, to release stool, is where you should be receiving things. That the mouth God gave you to speak, to praise his name, you should be using that same mouth to please another person sexually. To defile yourself by doing oral sex. And this is what these musicians, this is what they're putting in the TV. This is what they're convincing God's people, Christians, not to talk of your everyday person to do. Or is it the drugs? The perp and the lean and all these manner of drugs that people think smoking marijuana is normal. It's not normal. It's not normal to smoke things and then you're seeing things in the spirit and you're seeing your eyes are open and you're seeing manifest. That's, that's not normal to do that. It's not normal to walk around like a zombie mindless. It's not normal to lose all self-control. That these artists will sing things like music make me lose control and you will sing and say, yeah, I want to lose control. These artists will have you singing about how you want to die and you will sing it. Lil Uzi Vert opened his mouth and told people, you're coming to hell with me. You're already locked in. And people were like, yeah, it's cool. Uh, hold on, let me explain something to them real quick. Before everybody starts screaming and saying, oh, like I told y'all earlier, you motherfuckers. Enter the rapture, and if ain't nobody flying up to heaven right now, obviously all y'all motherfuckers going to hell, right with me. So, let's get it. Oh, you already here. I'm so sorry, you can't get out. You're stuck. It's over. You heard the song a million times. Are you kidding me? And even now, when we talk about things like Kirk Franklin, people still don't see it. Christians still don't see it. I thank God because right before I came on, God allowed me to see Will Smith apparently had a, a song performance with Kirk Franklin. I think it was at the BET Awards. What does light have to do with darkness? If you're walking in fellowship with the Lord, you may be deceived for a period by someone, but at some point God's going to yank you out and tell you this person is not of me. At what point will we accept as believers that Kirk Franklin is not of God? He's not walking with God. That he is Romans 132. That you're singing a gospel song. that you're singing a gospel song and people don't even recognize it's a song that glorifies God I cover this love with the blood of Jesus I will not be silenced brothers and sisters we have to seriously think about what it is we are allowing into our lives the people we are allowing to influence us The things that we set before our eyes, 
eventually condition us. When you watch a lot of movies with cursing, songs with cursing, you eventually become desensitized to cursing. And it's only a matter of time before you start cussing. When you're listening and polluting yourself, because that's what it is, is pollution, polluting yourself with these ideologies, these wicked songs, these wicked depictions, what do you think happens? Do you think when you listen to Get It Sexy five times, you won't start to develop that Get It Sexy mindset, whatever her mindset is, I don't know. You don't think when you listen to the Soweeties of the world, and the, go, go, what's her name? Gorilla? Gorilla? Glorilla? Of the world, you won't be influenced? Okay, because you will be. There's a reason why scripture says, I will set no evil thing before my eyes. Because when we set these things before our eyes, not only do we eventually become those things, but when we're talking about these things from a spiritual point of view, you are opening yourself up to a world of trouble. And I'm not saying this to fear monger. Now, we have enough things to be afraid about in this world. I'm not going to hold you. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But if you knew what existed in this world, you would know it's a lot of things. to. I'm not here to add to anyone's fear. I don't have time for that. But what I do have time for is establishing that there is a very real spiritual world. And God has given us insight to that spiritual world as his children to protect us. Stay away from that. Don't listen to that person. And I think it should be common sense to know. Don't listen to people who talk about their vajayjais. I think it should be common sense for us as believers. To know that a woman with her booty butt cheeks out is not someone I should be listening to. Right? Right, right. Someone who promotes things that the Lord detests through his word, as in it's literally right there in the Bible. I shouldn't be listening to the, their music. Right, right. But so many of us are so caught up in, oh, they sound good. And this goes for Christians as well. Because I'm seeing so many Christians collaborate with people who are clearly of the world. Where God did not send you to do that. God sent you to minister the gospel, to reach the lost. Not to bring the lost into the sheepfold, though they are unregenerate, right? And corrupt God's people. Brothers and sisters, let's be very careful. And in all our things, let's just make sure that we are centered and grounded in Jesus Christ. Because the level of deception that exists in the world is so rampant. And it's so important for us to know the spirit of the Lord. Because one thing I can say for certain, and I can say this because this is my testimony. This is my life. I didn't come out the womb praising Jesus. No, I fell into sin as a child, right? I lived in the world before the Lord snatched me out. Before I began to seek the Lord and he indeed was like my child. I'm here. God is real. And those who seek him will indeed find him. But the reality is that this world is a wicked world. And this world will have you indoctrinated in such a way that you will believe bad is good and good is bad. And scripture talks about that. Woe to the people who exchange good for bad and bad for good. Think about the lingo you say. Oh, I'm a baddie. Where does that come from? When did bad become good? When did that exchange happen? Begin to ask yourself, why do we say these things? What's the origin of this? Where does this come from? And you'll realize very quickly how a lot of those things are rooted in things that are put in place in order to literally laugh in the face of God. And we don't realize it. We don't realize it because we're just going along together.